All too often, at the first sign of uncertainty or confusion, many students will ask for help from whoever's closest, whether it's the teacher, someone they're sitting next to in class, or perhaps you if they're working at home on homework. It's as if they expect every single concept to just click in right away, and when one doesn't, they immediately go into panic mode. And to be honest, this is the behavior of toddlers. It's not what a student in high school or college should be doing. Now, recently, I came across a blog titled, First You Must Try, Then You Must Ask. It was written by a guy called Matt Ringle. In it, Matt talks about a concept that came up a lot in his work that he carried out called the 15-minute rule. Now, it states that if you're stuck on a problem, you need to take a solid 15 minutes of bashing your brain against whatever that problem is in whatever manner you see fit. And then if you still don't come up with anything after the 15 minutes, well then is your time to ask someone for help. But the problem with this is students don't know what to do in those 15 minutes. And that's what I wanna focus on in this video. Because most students, don't really know and haven't been trained how to actually go about tackling those tricky tasks or problems. And if they did, then they most likely wouldn't be stuck in the first place. So I went ahead and created a flowchart poster for this exact problem that's in the Great Transformation Zone member area now as I speak. But I thought I'd share for everybody, even if you're not a member, some of the basics from that. These are my six steps to getting your child unstuck. First, when they come to you and ask for help, ask them, have you read the question? Now, I know you're gonna get some eye rolling at this, but let me tell you, you're gonna be amazed at how many times in the classroom students haven't. They think they have, because they've glanced at it, but they need to go back and read it aloud to themselves or to me, and when they do that, often the missing piece of the puzzle just seems to appear and snap into place. Okay, so they read the question, second checkpoint. Finding out and sussing out exactly what the question is asking them to do, and by that I mean figuring out the command word. Now, if you've heard much of my stuff or read much of my information, you know I go on a lot about command words. That's because they are so, so, so important. I've run whole webinars each month for my students in the Great Transformation Zone just about this, and I even dedicate three whole modules to it in the 10-week Great Transformation Program. The command word tells your child exactly what to do, whether it's describe, or explain, or evaluate, or a multitude of other commands. There are also gonna be some keywords to keep them on topic. If they're still unsure after this, and they've sussed out what those command and keywords are, it's time for step three. Find out from them what is the objective or the learning intention from that piece of work. What was it in class? What was it in the um, unit that they're doing at the moment? Often, the objective or learning intention gets shared at the start of a lesson by a teacher, so they should have some idea about this. That will help them know what direction to take, where they should be focusing their efforts. Three steps, down to step four, if things are still unclear. Get them to look for any resources, whether this is maps, graphs, text extracts, images, photos, diagrams. Often there will be associated resources near to a task or put with a task or in the textbook somewhere. These will give information and clues that are gonna help them. <laughs> now, by now, they'll have, hopefully, a much more reasonable understanding of what they're being asked to do. But if they're still not sure about constructing a final answer, well, this is where step five comes in, to discuss their ideas. Where is it they think they need to be going now? What do they think they need to be doing? How can they start to formulate this together? This could be with a friend, if they're in class, with you at home, or even with their teacher. Finally, if they've gone as far as they can with this and they're still stuck and it happens and it's fine as long as they've been through a lot of these stages, it's time to figure out the exact element of the task that they are stuck on. 
This means that they can then specify a specific question about the steps or about the part or the element of the task that they are truly stuck on. They need to chunk it down. And then if they really do need help, they can at least be a little clearer about where they're at, what they do get, and what they have to work with, and what they are actually stuck on. There is nothing worse as a teacher than just being faced with the words, I don't get it. It's frustrating and it gives us very little to go on in terms of trying to help that student. Now, like I said, all of these steps are broken down into an easy to follow flow chart with extra information in the Grade Transformation Zone member area. So, check that out if your child's a member and if they're not, you might want to look into that. If you're watching this anywhere other than my blog at gradetransformation.com.au forward slash blog, then head over there, figure out some other gold nuggets of information from my videos and freebies. If you found this information useful, please scroll down, leave me a comment, leave me some feedback, I'd love to hear from you. And leave me a question or a request as to what else you might like me to cover on some of these videos. I'd love to hear your questions and requests as well. I'm Katie Price, Grade Transformation Expert. I'll see you next week on my next video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.